Jai. Grantaraj Shima Bhagavatam Ki Jai. All glories to the symbol devotee. All glories to the symbol devotee. All glories to the symbol devotee. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Is that good enough for you? If it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. Okay. So there's a microphone stand in the audio room? And this is. Yeah, and then there's one here. Oh, is this. Do you, do, do you recognize this one? Oh, really? Oh. There was a mic in there. Actually, you didn't use it. What is it? Actually, you know what? I don't recognize this at all. Oh, the mic either? Oh, well, yeah, they can take the girl. I wasn't done with um, That's okay. They should have it. <laughs> no, 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 they should have it. I was going to take off my sweater, but they should have it. Where are they visiting from? Ohio. Oh, Ohio. They take care of the from the Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Okay. All right. Hare Krishna. Oh. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Steps Quo, Chapter 33, Activities of Kapila, on text 27. Nitya Rudha Samadhi Vat Paravrita Guna Prama Nasasmara Tadatmanam Sapne Drishtam Ivot Hitaha Nitya Rudha Samadhi Vat Pravrita guna brahma Nasasmara tadatmanam Satne drishtam ivodhitaha Ityarudha samadhi vat Pravrita guna brahma Nasasmara tadatmanam Sapne drishtam ivodhitaha Nitya, eternal, Bal Rudha, situated in Samadhi Dvat, from trance, Paravrita, freed from Guna, of the modes of material nature, 
But I'm uh, illusion. No, some Sasmara. She did not remember. Tada. Then. Atmanam. Her material body. Sapne. In a dream. Drishtam. Seen. Eva. Just as. Uti. Her. One who has risen, arisen. Translation. Situated in an eternal trance and freed from illusion, impelled by the modes of material nature, she forgot her material body, just as one forgets his different bodies. Excuse me. Just as one forgets his different bodies in a dream. Purport. The great Vaishnav said that he who has no remembrance of his body is not bound to material existence. As long as we are conscious of our bodily existence, it is to be understood that we are living conditionally under the three modes of material nature. When one forgets his bodily existence, his conditional material life is over. This forgetfulness is actually possible when, when we engage our senses in the transcendental living service of the Lord. In the conditional state, one engages his senses as a member of a family or as a member of a society or country. But when one forgets all such membership in material circumstances and realizes that he is an eternal servant of the Supreme Lord, that is actual forgetfulness of material existence. This forgetfulness actually occurs when one renders service unto the Lord. A devotee no longer works with the body for sense gratification with family, society, society, country, humanity, and so on. He simply works for the Supreme Personality of God at Krishna. That is perfect Krishna consciousness. A devotee is always merged in transcendental happiness, and therefore he has no experience of material distresses. This transcendental happiness is called eternal bliss. According to the opinion of devotees, constant remembrance of the Supreme Lord is called samadhi, or trance. If one is constantly in trance, there is no possibility of his being attacked or even touched by the modes of material nature. As soon as one is freed from the contamination of the three, mode, three material modes, he no longer has to work, uh, he no longer has to take birth to transmigrate from one form to another in this material world. Om Vigana Tevadanda Sya Kranjana Shalakaya Chakshulam Milita Minitas May Shri Gurave Namaha Bakam Kadidva Chavam Pangam Nangai Te Gidim Yakripa Vatam Ham Vande Shri Gurun Diditalinam Vancha Kopadri Vashya Kripa Sindhubhiva Cha Patitanam Pavani Bhiva Vaishnam Hebhiva Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shivasari Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Read the translation again. Situated in eternal trance and freed from illusion, impelled by the, three, by the modes of material nature, she forgot her material body, just as one forgets his different bodies in a dream. So, probably give the example of, uh, in relation to the three modes of material nature, he said that... Um, he said that a person who's predominantly in the mode of ignorance and uh, a person who's in the mode of passion, the person in the mode of goodness, he gave the example that uh, of, of wet grass and of, of grass and then of dry straw and trying to ignite those different, uh, those different um, yeah, those different, what would you say, uh, materials, yeah. So, if we try to ignite grass that has been thoroughly soaked in water, it's very difficult. You put a match to it, it's going to take, it's, it's very difficult. And if you try to light regular grass on fire, um, it's easier. But if you, if you, if you try to light uh, dry straw on fire, it just immediately goes up. You could think of like a, like a pile of hay. Hay is just dry grass, right? 
straws, pile of hay. And you put a flame to that and it's just going to go up really quick. So he said that the, the wet grass is the mode of ignorance, the grass is uh, passion, and then the dry, the straw is goodness. So if we're trying to ignite Krishna consciousness within ourselves or within others, people who are in the who are more predominantly governed by mode of goodness, it's easier for them to take to Krishna consciousness in many cases. And those in the passion more difficult and those who are ignorance difficult. So that's a clue for us also if we are trying to become fully Krishna conscious or we're trying to become um, above the modes of material nature and liberated and all those different types of things that the more we could situate ourselves in the mode of goodness in terms of our eating and sleeping and uh, activities in general cleanliness and so on the better chance we have to become to rise up above all these modes and transcend <clears throat> that's our goal and to reach love for Krishna so we should try to know what the mode of goodness is, which is fully uh, described, well, for the most part, in essence, fully described in the Bhagavad Gita, and try to live by those principles. Um, and we see this practically, I mean, anyone who is engaged in, in type of preaching work, or anyone who's tried to be Christian conscious devotees, uh, they see that, if they're too much in the lower modes, then it's difficult for themselves personally to be Krishna conscious. And also, if somebody's too much in the lower modes, it's difficult to give them Krishna consciousness. They're just, the people just aren't attracted. Like last night, uh, we're at the Krishna, I was at the Krishna Lounge, and uh, there's these, there's these devotees, and they are, they're going to be moving out of town. Um, to Peru and uh, for indefinitely indefinite t number of t uh, time, definite time. So I was thinking, okay, well, maybe I should give them a gift or something like that. So, so anyways, I didn't have much to give them, <laughs> but I had some Nursinga Dave oil. So I said, I told it, I, okay, I said, okay, put out your hands, and then a few of them were there, and I put Nursinga Dave oil on their hands, and I said. This is very special, sacred from India, and specifically it's for protection, and protection in many ways, but also a lot of devotees take shelter in their Singadev for different reasons, but in terms of a journey, I told them, for a journey. So, but one fellow, everybody accepted it, but one guy. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, because I, I said, everybody, oh, put out your hands, you know, and then he was in the background. And uh, and I said, oh, would you like some? And he goes, no, that's okay. And you could see that with within his uh, the external features of his person, you know, his face and how he was in general, you could see that he was suffering due to the lower modes of material nature, specifically ignorance. You could just see it's written all over, clear as day. Um, so he didn't accept it. And and that's interesting because, but yeah, he's 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 being governed by by ignorance, by mode of ignorance. And whatever, I wasn't like upset and angry and oh that guy didn't accept it. I mean, but it's unfortunate. So so that so that's always the case that the conditioned souls in this world uh, they don't accept. Krishna consciousness simply due to this this ignorance, this stubborn ignorance, envy and ignorance and just just tamasic uh, nature. And that goes with us too. I mean, sim sometimes, at least not for all devotees, but some devotees. I mean, sometimes they're interested in Krishna and sometimes they're not. And when they're not interested, it means they're in the modes of passion and ignorance and all these different things. So it's like this, uh, it's like a repellent, you know, like, um, 
it's it's like we put this uh you know like mosquito repellent you put a mosquito repellent on and then uh the mosquitoes will stay away if you don't put the repellent on the mosquitoes will come right so um it's like we put this this mosquito this it's like we put this repellent you know on our bodies or on ourselves whatever in that we don't uh we don't allow the transcendental message we don't allow krishna consciousness to enter you know to bite us or whatever bite our false ego or whatever purify us it's like this it's like a barrier we put up um and uh that is, so it's so it's important that we that we try to break that barrier between us and krishna and and someone say hey hey what do you mean i'm put you're putting a, what do you mean i'm putting a barrier up well Prabhupada said that he said he had a quote he said that he said this about material uh cleanliness he said if you if you remain unclean krishna will remain uh, i don't know if he said a million miles away but He'll remain very far away <laughs> if you remain unclean materially, like surroundings and etc. Why? Because Krishna doesn't come uh, near, really, <laughs> on, in one aspect, one angle of vision. Krishna doesn't really come near to people who are not uh, situated in mode of goodness or beyond. He doesn't actually come near to them in some fashion of course he's there in the heart and all that but but i mean like this direct this uh loving relationship doesn't manifest so if we want to advance in krishna consciousness we have to somehow or other break that barrier between us and krishna and that barrier is the modes of material nature passion and ignorance are the worst and ignorance is the worst. Ignorance is complete helplessness. When somebody reaches the point of ignorance, in many ways it's very hard to return. They may, as a human, reach ignorance and then that's it most of the time. They may they may go down to hell, they may go down to an animal body. It's just, it's, it's almost uh, impossible to return to sanity. And we see people like that. People go insane all the time. Just go out on the, look out on the streets and look, there's so many people that go insane all the time and they remain like that for their whole life a lot of times i mean i grew up in uh some part of san diego el cajon and um there was this insane guy <laughs> homeless insane guy you know he talked to himself and very dirty and all these different things and uh you know i went back with my mother we had to go do something this is, I don't know, some months ago, we had to go do something in El Cajon. And sure enough, the guy's still there. <laughs> guy's, you know, guy's still wandering around. I mean, I told him, hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I chanted to him, so hopefully that helped. Um, so yeah, ignorance, passion, these are, and even goodness, sometimes, a lot of the time, can be the barrier between us and Krishna. Like people in the mode of goodness, uh, I'm not, I'm not talking about devotees, but it could be a barrier for people. Um, like, you know, I, I live at a farm and I'm very peaceful and, you know, I eat organic vegetables and, and I don't, I'm nonviolent and all these different things. And I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm very happy. Hey, don't bother me. Oh, I don't want, that's, ah, Krishna's, oh, Krishna's okay, but I don't want anything to do with him. I'm, I'm satisfied in my, sattvic lifestyle um, so that's another thing so so whatever it is the ignorance passion goodness we don't want to let those modes uh, be a barrier between us and Krishna so therefore Prabhupada said you go to goodness and then from goodness you could transfer self to shoot a set for a pure goodness transcendental Krishna consciousness um, so that's so that's the idea of the barrier, and also um, this idea of having a barrier between us and devotees. I mean, it's very easy to have a barrier between us and devotees. We just kind of you know put a wall up, and you know no one could come in. We don't we don't let anybody in to our 
lives. Um, and this could also be to the modes. You know, we don't want to be disturbed, this and that. And it's actually a bit of a, it's actually a bit of a Mayavadi concept or impersonalist concept um, that relationships are painful, so I don't want to have them. That's called impersonalism. Because in person, let's say, this material body is painful, so I don't want to have it. And there is no such thing as a spiritual body. I just want to merge into to the impersonal effulgence. No pain, right? So sometimes devotees, people, devotees, whatever, they don't want to have relationships with other devotees. In other words, they put the barriers up, the walls up, because they don't want a relationship. Why? Because it's, cause in their experience throughout life, relationships cause pain, which is true. <laughs> but um, but that's actually an impersonalist idea because we want to have relationships with devotees, you know, open our hearts or whatever, open ourselves up to devotees so we can have relationships. And yes, there may be some pain because we're conditioned souls, but um, we should try to, as far as possible, have pure relationships in Krishna consciousness. Um, but whether they're painful or not, because we're conditioned souls or whatever the case may be, it is an impersonalist idea not to have relationships because they're painful. So we should want to have relationships and try to um, have pure relationships. Um, and in this way we could actually even if it's like very small steps, or you could say baby steps, or just small, uh, you know, not not much movement towards the supreme goal, but at least we're making some progress, rather than making like no progress or going back. So, um, in you know, a lot of sometimes do oh, how do I make advancement? How do I make advancement? Well. Just these little things, actually. There's so many little things we could do that don't take much time that will uh, help us advance so much. For example, like chanting Sheikh Shastika every day. Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami says that one who recites that every day or hears it, they uh, get closer to perfection, spotless Krishna Prem. And how long does that take? It takes like five minutes. It's like chanting a round, a fast round. I mean. There's so many different things we could do. That's just one. So, um, the mercy of Krishna is there, but we have to, in some, in some fashion, we have to qualify ourselves, actually, to get it. Just like we sing every day. It's not that we enter the spiritual world <laughs> as some, you know, <laughs> like people say, oh, who let this chump in, you know? Who let this guy in? In other words, qualified people have to enter. Um, therefore, we're praying every day, right, to Tulsi Maharani. What are we praying for? The Adhikar. Adhikar means the qualification. Give me the qualification. Please, give me the qualification. So, there is some qualification. Um, pure, devotion, pure devotion to Krishna. So the mercy of Krishna is fully there, but we just have to somehow or other, as far as possible, get these modes out of the way, get barriers out of the way, and then Krishna's mercy flows a lot uh, faster and quicker. You know, we get the mercy. Just like this fellow I was bringing up, you know, he didn't want the Nursingadev oil. Why? You know, modes of ignorance, modes, just materialistic consciousness. He just, the mercy was there, but he didn't take it. So... So devotees are giving mercy, Krishna is giving mercy, they're very, very merciful. We just, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, the most merciful, right, incarnations, they're giving mercy freely, but we just have to take it. Um, and in this way, uh, just as Devahuti, she's saying, or it's been explained that Devahuti, she forgot her material body. Um, in other words, she wasn't absorbed wasn't preoccupied in her, you know, material necessities and whatever, body and mind. She was, she was just absorbed in Krishna or Kapila Dev. And understanding that, that she doesn't belong to this material world, it's not that, 
she was detached from family and society and country. Um, in other words, she wasn't thinking that this is all in all. You know, this is this is it. But she expanded her consciousness, right? And that's what devotees do. They're bent to. They, you have. Uh, you have you could have crippled consciousness, right? Which they um, they call kripana, right? Crippled consciousness, kripana, miser. And and then there's the brahman is supposed to have the uh, broad consciousness uh, expanded, not miser. So miser miser means they have something but they don't utilize it properly, just like a miser. I mean, <laughs> you hear these stories and people, they have like millions of dollars or whatever, billions of dollars, and they just, they don't want to spend on anybody or anything, not even themselves. You know, the guy's still wearing the same pair of pants, you know, for the last 10 years or something. And whatever, he doesn't spend on his family members or anything. So he's a miser, he doesn't want to spend his money. Doesn't utilize it properly. So, one who doesn't use, utilize the material body, for Krishna consciousness um, properly, is a, is a miser, is a kripana, cripple-minded. And one who does utilize it, uh, that's that's devotee. So, so that's the idea that we want to follow Devahuti and others who who have who have done this and um, and who set a very nice example how to do this. And in this way, we will experience not um, not the, the the material distresses of this world, right? But we will experience transcendental happiness or eternal bliss, or as it said here, right? Nit nitya, eternal nityananda, eternal bliss. So, um, so yeah, there's a great opportunity to attain that. It's not, it's a very great opportunity. I mean, Lord Nityananda, Lord Nityananda um, Prabhu, he, uh, he was ordered by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to preach. And uh, that's what he did. So as we know, he preached Jagai and Mada and many people you know, like that, and converted many. Um, so Lord Nityananda, he he becomes especially pleased when we also preach, as far as possible. And that's actually how we how we get the adhikar to um, to enter into a relationship with Krishna. That's how we get the adhikar by preaching. So um, right as Srila Prabhupada said in Los Angeles, he said. If you want to approach or enter the dancing party, if you want to have a relationship with Radha Krishna, you have to get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we can't skip or neglect or not notice or not acknowledge Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda. We have to acknowledge them to the utmost degree. And aside from that, you've got to get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And if you want to get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you got to get the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Right? And if you want to get the mercy of Lord Nityananda, you have to approach people like Jagan Madai. You have to approach people like Jagan Madai. So there's plenty of people like Jagan Madai, believe me. <laughs> um, in other words, people who are completely fallen and in a billion ways, they're fallen. So there's tons of those people. The world's packed, jam-packed with those people. So, and if, if if you approach those people, then you get the mercy of Nityananda, then the mercy of Chaitanya, you get the Adhikar to enter into the uh, relationship and experience that Nityananda, that eternal bliss. Um, so, whether we're, whatever, whatever type of preachers we can be, we should try to be some type of preacher, you know distribute books or do Harinam or talk with people about Krishna or this or that, so many different things. People come to the temple, we give them books, give them prasadam, something. Take whatever little chance we can to, to distribute. Um, and then we become uh, freer from the modes of nature and advance. So does anyone have any uh, questions or comments?
question or comment is when is someone else going to give class? <laughs> I'm ready for that. Chavita Prabhu's still at his house. <laughs> yeah, he's doing his Vyasa Puja marathon. He's I'm if if any of the devotees want to give, I'm I'm. You call me not humble. <laughs> um, well, there's Javita Prabhu, myself. Dharma Setu has been out of town too. Yeah. So Javita Prabhu has been gone. Dharma Setu has been gone. You know. So those are two speakers. They could take a few days each. And then there's me. Pavamana gave the other day. That was good. So. Okay. And Pavamana's Prabhu's there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I said in the, we talked about this in the past, but you know, because there's so many services that actually, you could say on the on the highest level, on the highest standard, we we should be you know qualified to do, you know, like go on the altar. Of course, we, you know, we have the basic, you could say, qualifications in some degree, but. You know, like going on the altar and, and cooking the Sunday feast and leading kirtan and giving class and and all these different things, right? And if everybody was thinking, hey, well, I can't cook the Sunday feast, you know, I'm too fallen. Or, hey, I can't go on the altar, I'm too fallen. Or, hey, I can't give a class. Everything would just fall apart, you know? So, uh, of course, we have to put that aside sometimes. So, okay, well, I'm fallen, but anyways... What can I do? And yeah, I think like that too, to be quite honest. Yeah, I'm fallen. And, and from many aspects and many angles of vision, it's actually true. Um, but yeah, I see, okay, well, I need to do it. So I just do it. It's purifying for me too, because I get to associate with the Bhagavatam. I get to try to speak on the message of the Bhagavatam. And I'm also talking to myself um, and, also, and others, so it's good. And Prabhupada also, he didn't like, he didn't really stress, I mean, he, he gave people an opportunity, you know. That, okay, you engage, you engage, and you get purified from doing this. He didn't say, oh, you have to be perfect, and then you could do. Of course, some basic qualifications have, may have to be there, but, so, it's nice. All right, all right. So, Grantraj Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki Jaj, the Prabhupada Ki Jaj. The Bhajanarayan Swami will give a Sunday. Sunday Bhagavatam. Sunday Bhagavatam class.